So today I'm going to show you the absolute basics uh, of how to model in plasticity. It's enough to help you get started and it'll give you the tools as a beta tester to um, both make cool models and help give me useful feedback on features I need to implement and bugs that you run into. So let's get started. On the right hand side of the viewport are two sections of icons. The first section allows you to create two-dimensional objects such as lines and circles and rectangles and so forth. And the second section allows you to create three-dimensional objects like spheres and boxes and so forth. Now, to navigate the viewport, by default, you use the middle mouse button to orbit and the right mouse button to pan. This is customizable, of course, just like every key binding in Plasticity is customizable. With objects selected, Another set of icons will appear at the bottom of the screen. These are operations you can perform on the current selection, such as move, rotate, and scale. To perform an operation by clicking uh, this button, for example, a gizmo will appear, the move gizmo, which you can interact with to drag x, y, z, etc. And when we're happy with our placement, we can right-click to confirm. Now you'll notice also that there are key bindings, G, R, and S, move, rotate, and scale, for example, G, which is the same key binding as in Blender. And in addition, every command will show key bindings that are specific to that command, such as in the case of move, X, Y, Z, which will allow you to move just like in Blender, constrained to a, an individual axis. Now the command model in Plasticity is to move objects or modify objects multiple times, and when you're happy with the result, you right-click to confirm. Plasticity is also similar to Blender in that there are selection modes. So by default, these are all enabled, but you can, for example, only turn on edge select, which will allow you to select only edges, or turn on face mode, which will allow you to only select faces, or turn on solid mode, which will allow you to only turn on solids. There are key bindings, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, which will allow you to switch different modes. Now, when certain kinds of objects are selected, a gizmo will automatically appear. For example, when an edge is selected, the fillet gizmo will automatically appear. With the fillet gizmo, you can drag away from the edge to fillet or towards the edge to chamfer. There's also this white circle, which allows you to change the angle of the chamfer, and a dialog will appear, which will allow you to change a bunch of very advanced settings. Additionally, there are key bindings, such as using D to change the fillet, or C to change the chamfer, which will allow you to quickly uh, manipulate without having to precisely interact with the gizmo. If a face is selected, by contrast, this kind of push-pull gizmo will appear, which allows you to offset a face. Now the meaning of offset depends on the actual kind of face involved. So for example, if it's a fillet face, offsetting it will uh, increase or decrease the size of the fillet or remove it altogether. If it's a flat face, it will change, uh, it will offset that face as well as reapply any adjacent fillets. You can escape with the, out of a command by hitting escape, which will abort its changes. Or again, you can right click to you can right click to confirm. Now let's create a very simple scene. I'm going to create a little sphere here and another sphere here. Okay. Now I'm going to make these two spheres uh, overlap by moving this along x. We can see that it overlaps now. And if I have both objects selected, you'll notice that there is a Boolean combine command. So the key binding for that is Q. That defaults to Boolean difference, but you can use Q to change it to intersection. And again, if you select an edge, by default, the fillet gizmo will appear. And by using D, for example, I can fillet that edge very quickly. I can keep filleting until I find a value that I'm happy with, and then right click to confirm. You can also cut objects with curves. So for example, if I draw a curve on the XY plane here, and then I run the cut command, which is this icon here, or the C key binding, it will cut this solid with this uh, line as uh, its cutting tool. So now it's divided into two pieces. I can select that 
and I can, for example, delete it by hitting X, again, Blender style key bindings. Now, to start from scratch, you can go over here and click on New Document or hit Control N, which will restart Plasticity and clear out its geometry database. Let's talk a little bit about curves. If you make uh, a polyline, it can be uh, planar or non-planar. So for example, I can draw from this point onto the z-axis, and now I have a three-dimensional curve. So curves can be planar or non-planar, but a special kind of curve is a closed planar curve. So this circle, for example, encloses a planar space. A rectangle also would enclose a planar space. And you'll notice that there are these blue-gray regions that you can select. When you select one of these blue-gray regions, by default, an extrude gizmo will appear, which you can drag to extrude. Or again, you can use the key bindings, D or A for angle or T for thickness. And again, you can interact with the gizmo, or you can interact uh, and type in exact numbers into the dialog. We can cancel this by hitting Escape or right-click to confirm, as I'll do here. Now, when you select a curve, you'll notice that there are these icons. For example, a yellow cone and these uh, yellow spheres. The cone allows you to offset a curve and the yellow sphere allows you to fillet a curve. <laughs> um, however, if it's, a cur if it's an arc, the, the cone will allow you to change the radius of the arc. When two planar enclosed regions overlap, the union of those regions um, become this kind of blue-gray area, which you can extrude as one body if you like. I'm going to hit Escape to cancel. You can also use the trim command, or T, which will allow you to cut curves at the intersections with other curves. Now, we have a bunch of individual curves, which if we want, we can join them together by using the join command. Once curves are joined together, we can fillet them and modify them uh, in interesting ways. Now let me start from scratch again. Let me create a simple box, and I'm going to chamfer this box uh, right there. Now these icons in the upper right hand corner allow me to change attributes of the viewport, such as to change perspective versus orthographic, toggle x-ray mode, which allows you to see through objects, and turn on and off the axes and the floor. Now you can change the viewport camera orientation by interacting with this gizmo up here or use a key binding to get into, for example, top view, front view, and side view. And additionally, if you select a face and hit the space bar, the camera and construction plane will orient onto that face. So for example, with a construction plane here, the circle we just created is on the same plane as this face. Now, if you want, while you're in one of these sort of temporary construction planes off of face, you can click on this icon up here to save it, and that will save the construction plane for later. So when you navigate away and the construction plane disappears, you can always kind of come back to it by clicking on that icon. And you can see that the construction plane will be on that face regardless of the orientation of the camera. You can always go back to the default construction plane by hitting XY, and now things are back to normal. Now I want to talk a little bit about snap points. Snap points are uh, kind of positions in 3D space that have a lot of gravity that allow you when creating an object or a curve that will move the point to be into an exact position. For example, um, in the middle of this face or in the middle of this edge or on this edge or at the beginning of this edge or on the x-axis and so forth. Um, Snap points can be really useful, for example, if I have a sphere and I want to create a cylinder coming off of this sphere at its normal, I can create a cylinder on its face and then there will be various snap points for x, y, and as well as its normal. And so that allows me to snap into various places for an object. Now you'll notice down here there are these key bindings, N, X, Y, Z. If I hit N, it'll snap onto the normal, or X, or Y, or Z. 
Additionally, you can free yourself from one of these sticky snaps by hitting shift, and you can stick to a snap by, when your mouse is on a snap, holding the shift key down, and then you'll be stuck to that snap for until you let go of the shift key. Now that last feature can be especially useful when you're drawing on a plane. So for example, let's say I want to draw a line on this face, but not only on this face, but coplanar with it. When uh, it's the snap point says face, I can hold down the shift key, and now I'm locked to the face snap. And so even if I draw outside of the face, right-click to confirm, you'll see that all of those points are coplanar with that face. Now I'm going to hit Escape to unselect that object. Uh, important things to know are that showing, hiding objects is just like Blender. With the selected object, you can hit H to hide it, Alt-H to unhide it, or you can hit Shift-H to, to hide all unselected objects, and again, Alt-H to bring them back. Additionally, you can use the slash key to focus the camera on the current selection. Lastly, I want to talk about saving import and export. By default, Plasticity saves everything to a temporary directory every time you make a change. So for example, if I reload the app by hitting Control-R, or Command-R on Mac, it will not lose any data um, because everything is stored in a temporary directory. So if you close the app and reopen it, you won't lose anything. Uh, but if you reboot your computer, you will lose stuff. So you may want to export uh, your document into the C3D format, which is the main format that Plasticity uses. There are also some other formats that are useful for uh, uh, importing and exporting into like Moi 3D or Fusion and so forth. Okay, so I think that's enough for a new user to get started. But yeah, that's it. And thank you for participating in the beta. And you can be super helpful by just trying to model something relatively simple and tell me uh, what's missing, what's broken, what could be better. And uh, I'll focus on the highest priority things first. And hopefully in several months, Plasticity will be a fully featured, awesome, a 3D modeling app, perfect for concept artists. Thank you.